So, we shall continue our uh, discussion about the real valued functions defined on some subsets of the real line namely the intervals. So, in the last class we were discussing uh, the meaning of symbols like this that is let us write it in this fashion f x tends to L as x tends to A okay. and we have already defined what is the meaning of this when L and A both are real numbers. Now, what we want to do is that or what rather what we have done in the last class is that we extend the meaning of this idea of the limit by allowing this L as well as this A to be in the extended real line. So, L and A can be both in the extended real line and remember that extended real line is usual real line in addition with these two symbols minus infinity and plus infinity. Okay. So, what is the additional thing that has happened is that now L can be a real number or plus or minus infinity and similarly A can also be a real number or or plus or minus infinity. Okay. Now, let us recall what was the idea how we had defined what we had seen is that if either A or L uh, is a real number okay, then we take neighborhood of A that is that we take as something like A minus delta to A plus delta that is an interval containing A okay, or A minus epsilon to A plus epsilon okay, either one of those okay. and uh, neighborhood of infinity that we take as uh, something like this m to infinity okay. that is nothing but the set of all x such that x is bigger than m okay. and similarly neighborhood of minus infinity that we take as minus infinity to m okay minus infinity to m okay and so what is the meaning of this uh, f x tends to l as x tends to a we say that this means okay let me again write uh, f x tends to l as x tends to a this means that uh, for every uh, neighborhood u of l there exists a neighborhood v of a such that whenever x belongs to v f x belongs to u or which is same as saying that we will say that f of v is contained in u. Okay. okay. And when A and L both are real numbers, we take this neighborhood U as L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon and V as A minus delta to A plus delta and then our definition becomes for every epsilon there exists delta such that etcetera. Okay. Right. So, similarly using these neighborhoods we can translate these definitions also uh, in the usual manner okay, if you want. Okay. Let us just take one, one special case. So, suppose uh, let us say A is uh, real number and uh, L is infinity okay. okay. That means, f x tends to infinity as x tends to A and A is a real number okay. So, what will be the meaning of that for every neighborhood u of infinity neighborhood of infinity is like this okay m to infinity. So, we, so it will mean that for every m bigger than 0 okay there exists now neighborhood of a is uh, so v is a minus delta to a plus delta and u is m to infinity okay u is m to infinity so there exists delta bigger than 0 such that what should happen f of v is contained in u that means f of a minus delta to a plus delta should be contained in u that is uh, uh, mod x minus a less than delta this means x belongs to v right mod x minus a less than delta that means x belongs to v this should imply f x bigger than m right f x bigger than m means f x lies in this f x lies in this m to infinity okay right that is the meaning okay. and similarly you can rewrite the definitions by considering various combinations where, where a can be plus or minus infinity or l can be plus or minus infinity or one of those is real numbers and other is infinity all sorts of possible combinations are possible. We shall not do, go into separate discussions of all these cases this one definition covers all those possibilities okay. by just this understanding that uh, neighborhood of a real number is of the form a minus delta to a plus delta or a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon and the neighborhood of plus or minus infinity are of this form. 
Now using this definition we can also show that whatever are the usual theorems about the sums and products of limits etc. that we have discussed they are also true in this new situation also. So we shall not go into very detailed proof of that I will just state those theorems here okay, because those are some things which uh, we shall be using in future okay. So suppose suppose f x tends to L and g x tends to m as x tends to a okay. And here l m a all can be all are in extended real length okay. that is l m a all are in extended real length. So, any any of those can be plus or minus infinity or a real number then okay again as x tends to a now first thing is f x plus g x tends to l plus a sorry l plus m and then f x into g x tends to l into m and uh, last last thing is f x by g x tends to l by m okay. And if you remember in the usual way of stating the theorem we uh, we stated these two uh, things as they are only by stating the last theorem we said that that holds if m is not equal to 0 okay. That is because uh, if m is 0 l by m is not defined but that is the uh, that is the care now we have to take in all these cases okay because it can happen that l plus m is also not defined because we have seen that suppose you have l is infinity and m is minus infinity then this is infinity minus infinity that is also not defined. So if here also if it is infinity into uh, infinity into 0 that is also not defined. So what, what I will say is that all these things are true provided the right hand sides are well defined okay that is all these things are true provided right hand side I will simply write R H S is defined okay. We shall not discuss the proof of this theorem because there are no new ideas involved okay basically the same same uh, uh, same idea will hold here okay. okay. Now let us again let us go to now discussing a uh, new concept here new in the sense uh, we are discussing it for the first time but you would have already uh, come across this in your undergraduate courses namely differentiation. Okay. Okay. So let us just recall a few things again here as I said when we are discussing the real valued functions it is not our aim to just repeat whatever you have already learned during your undergraduate courses okay. What we want to do is that we shall just review a few things and try to emphasize where exactly the ideas of real analysis come into picture okay. Like things like connectedness, compactness see what, what could have happened is that you might have used those ideas earlier without realizing that that is a thing that is involved okay. So we shall point out whenever such things happens. So let us begin with the definition. So suppose f is a function and that is defined from a b to r. And suppose we take some x, uh, now for the convenience let me say a less than x less than b okay. Then we will define let us say a new function uh, let me call it phi, phi of t we, de we define that as f t minus f x divided by t minus x. Obviously, this cannot be defined if t equal to x. So, we will say that this is defined for all t in a b and t not equal to x okay or you can say t in a b minus x okay. So, so now we consider limit of this function that is limit of phi t as t tends to x okay. Of course, phi is not defined at x but that is not required for considering the limit okay that is what we have seen for defining for 
talking about a limit the function need not be defined at that point. Okay. So, we can talk about a limit of phi t s t tends to x if this limit exists okay. and now when I when I am thinking of this definition I mean the limit exists as a real number. Now, I am not talking of this extended definition of limit okay, right. Now, if this limit exists as a real number then we say that f is differentiable at that point x okay and whatever is that limit a real number that will be called a derivative of f and we will denote that by uh, okay let us say denote that by f prime of x. Of course, there are many other notation d f by d t at t equal to x etcetera, etcetera let us not bother about that right now okay. For the time being we will say we shall so, so let me say that if if limit exists if limit of uh, okay let me give this function in full f t minus f x divided by t minus x as t tends to x exists yes. we say that f is differentiable at x. and the value of the limit the value of the limit is called the derivative of x okay. Okay. value of the limit is called the derivative. Remember we already proved that whenever limit exists it has to be unique. Okay there cannot be two different values of limit. So, with the limit exists there is only one unique value that is the value a real number which will be called the derivative that is why the derivative of f at x and we will denote it by f prime x. Okay. Now, one well known things which uh, about the derivatives or differentiality that you have already learnt I am sure is that whenever a function is differentiable at a point it is continuous at that point okay. So, let us just recall that if f is differentiable at x then it is continuous at x. It follows immediately by looking at the definition of the derivative that is so Recall that since the whole thing is happening inside an interval, all points are limit points. Okay, so when we say that the function is continuous, what we will mean is that limit of f t as t tends to x must be f x. That is what we require, right? And to to see that, we just look at the difference f t minus f x and write that as so f t minus f x divided by t minus x and then multiplied by t minus x. Okay. And consider the limit of both sides as t goes to x. Okay. We already know that since f is differentiable at x, this goes to f prime x. Okay. This goes to f prime x okay. and t minus x obviously goes to 0 as t goes to x. So, so this goes to 0 okay. right. So, the product will be 0 and so that means that limit of that is same as saying that limit of f t minus f x as t goes to x is 0 which is same as saying that limit of f t as t goes to x is f x okay. and that is same as saying that f is continuous at x. Okay. Of course, this is something that you already know but the point is we have made a crucial use of the fact that f is differentiable at x here. So, this proof will also obviously not work if f is not differentiable at x 
okay. But of course that immediately does not say that the converse is false okay. To show that the converse is false again as I said there is only one way we have to think of a counter example okay. that is counter example of a function which is continuous but not differentiable at some point okay. Again I, I am sure you would have come across that function it is a well known function namely the absolute value of x or mod x which is uh, which is continuous in fact at all points but it is not differentiable at x equal to 0 okay. and one can give several examples like that okay there is there is no dearth of examples okay. all right. Then we shall also just quickly review the theorem about the various uh, operations on derivatives okay. okay. Suppose we take say two functions f and g defined defined on the interval and suppose both are differentiable at a point okay then we want to know what happens for the sum and product etc. Okay. okay. Now before that let, let me also say one more thing here okay. Uh, here we have talked about limit of phi t as t goes to x okay and when we say nothing about the limit it is the usual limit okay. But we have also considered for the real valued functions what is meant by left hand limit and right hand limit etc. Okay. It is possible to consider that also okay. It is possible to consider that also and that sort of thing will be called left derivative and right derivative etc. Okay. So it is quite and again from whatever we have learned about the limits it is well known that if the limit exists then both left hand limit as well as right, right hand limit will exist but the converse is false okay. That is it is possible that left hand and right hand limit may exist but the limit may not exist which is what we have called a discontinuity of the first type okay namely namely jump discontinuity. So using those ideas we can define what is meant by left hand derivative of a function what is or say we can say function is differentiable from left or differentiable from right and those values we can define as a left hand derivative and right hand derivative etc. Okay. But we are not going to do that kind of thing here okay. We will uh, I mean it is possible to do that but uh, since no really new concepts are involved we shall not go into that. Okay. There is only one thing that we note you should notice here. I have taken here a strictly less than x less than b that is because we are considering the usual limit okay. If you take x is equal to a since there is nothing on the left of a okay. So the only limit that you can consider is the right hand limit okay. So, civil, so at, at the point x equal to a if you want to talk about derivative it will be only right right handed derivative. Similarly at the point x equal to b it will be only left handed left hand derivative okay. So, Sometimes we may need to talk about the, that kind of thing at the end points of an interval. So at that time we will mention but otherwise we shall not go into too much details about the left hand and right hand derivative okay. Coming back to what I said just now uh, suppose we take two functions like f and g from a b to r okay and Suppose f g are differentiable at x in a b. Okay. Okay. Again, I'll take x in the interior point. Okay. X in. Just to avoid this so discussion of left and right hand derivative, we shall take the interior point. Okay. Then. First thing is f plus g is differentiable at x at x and the value of the derivative that is f plus g prime at x is f prime x plus g prime x. you can see that there will be nothing much in the proof of this okay. This will follow simply by the corresponding theorem about the limit okay because if you write the uh, if you write uh, the for example if you write the function of phi t replacing f by f plus g okay. It will be f plus g of t minus f plus g of x divided by t minus x okay. So it will be f t minus f x plus g t minus g x 
divided by t minus x and if the limit of both oh, since f and g both are differentiable the limit of each of those oh, components will exist. So, the limit of the sum will exist. So, all these things follow whatever I say about derivatives all these things will follow by using the corresponding theorems about the limits so, and of course, some simplification and some adjustings of sums etcetera. Okay. So, second part is that about the product okay. So, f into g is also differentiable at x. at x and uh, derivative of f g at x that so called product formula. So, that is uh, f prime x into g x plus f x into g prime x. Again here also uh, there is nothing much involved see uh, if you instead of this f you replace f t f f into g everywhere. So, it will be f t into g t minus f x into g x okay. and if you remember what we do is that you add and subtract a term f t into g x and then just uh, since the limit is with respect to t wherever the terms involving only x are there you just take them as a common factor and then you will get this formula okay. So, there is again there is nothing much in this okay. So, and finally, this f by g is differentiable at x and the derivative of that uh, f by g prime at x ok, f by g prime at x. Remember that uh, this is different from the corresponding theorems on limits ok the product of the, the the derivative of the product is not same as the product of the derivative okay unlike the limits okay but you of course this follows by using the corresponding theorems on limits but before that you have to do some work okay because if you replace f by ft into gt etc you are not getting the product of this kind of fractions so that is where you need some some work okay so similarly here for f by g so if you replace this by ft by gt and this by fx by gx you have to simplify and uh, adjust the adjust the corresponding terms and then use the uh, corresponding theorems about the limits. We shall not go into that kind of details because I am sure you have done you have seen these kind of proofs in your undergraduate courses. Uh, if you have forgotten you can always look into one of those books. And, okay. So, ok what is this formula f, f by g whole prime x that is uh, this is g prime x square then here you have f prime x into g x minus g prime x into x. This is g prime x square. Yes. G of x whole square. Oh sorry, g of x whole square. I'm sorry. It should be g of x whole square. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, coming to the uh, usual functions and their derivatives okay. again as I said since this is a topic which you would have done quite thoroughly in the undergraduate course we shall not spend any time on that. Okay. How to find the derivatives of some well known functions uh, by using various formulas and, uh, uh, and doing things like so called logarithmic derivatives etcetera etcetera those type of things we shall not go into we shall not discuss in this course. But we shall just recall that we will need the we will need the fact that uh, derivatives of some well known functions are again some well known functions let us just recall a few things ok. For example, if f is a constant function ok then its derivative is 0 ok that is that is again follows clearly from the definition and further if let us say f x is equal to x. f x equal to x ok. Then that function phi t which we will write that will simply become t minus x divided by t minus x. So, that will be just one constant function 1. So, in this case this is differentiable everywhere and so f prime x 
will be equal to 1 for all x okay okay then using this fact and repeat uh, using this second thing here we can write uh, we can write suppose I take g x is equal to x to the power n okay then you have to just use this repeatedly okay uh, x square x cube etcetera etcetera products of various things using this repeatedly we can we can get that g prime at x is n into x to the power n minus one. of course here I am assuming that n is a positive integer power so uh, n is n of course n equal to 0 is also fine okay if you take negative powers then you will have to use you will have to use this of course I should have mentioned here that this last formula is valid provided g x is not 0 okay but that is understood because uh, at no point of time we are allowing the in the discussion of the derivatives where we say derivative exists it means that it exists as a real number okay. we are not allowing the extended real line value for the derivatives okay at least right now okay let us see if we need to change that in future okay so if if you take n as a negative integral value then you will have to use this last last thing also okay right okay <laughs> then you can uh, uh, use this well known functions like things like derivative of uh, e power x is e power x or log x is 1 by x and things like that okay and uh, various trigonometric functions and inverse trigonometric functions and all those things okay. Let me just say one more thing here that uh, or one theorem which is quite useful and which will be which needs to be used quite often and what is called chain rule. this is about the derivative of composite functions okay. So again let us say that suppose uh, f from a b to r is differentiable at x in again let me take some open interval a to b okay okay and suppose we consider one more function g that is defined not on this interval a b but on some interval which contains the range of this function f okay on some interval which contains the range of this okay so let us say that uh, let that is range of this interval I shall denote by f of a b okay let f of a b be contained in some interval i and g is defined from i to r g is defined from i to r and since f of this whole interval lies inside this interval i f of x is a point in i okay f of x is a point in i and so g is defined at that point okay g is defined at that point okay. so g from i to r and suppose i assume that g from i to r is differentiable at fx at fx remember fx is a point in i okay and g is defined on i then what this chain rule says is that the composite function g composed with f okay that is differentiable at x and it tells us the value of the derivatives okay I mm, will continue here okay let us say define mm, h from a b to r by okay let me write like this h is equal to g composed with f h is equal to g composed with f okay or if you want to write in the full form that let us say h of t is equal to g of f of t 
for t in a b. Okay. Then h is differentiable. H is differentiable at x, okay, and h prime at x, that is the derivative of h at x. It is same as g prime at f x and multiplied by f prime at x. That is, see till now we had just talked about the algebraic operations on the functions. Now, this is a different type of operation. Here we take the composition of two functions and then this says when is the composite function. Composite function here is h, h is g composed with f. If g and f are differentiable, that is f is differentiable at x and g is differentiable at f x, then h is differentiable at x and its value is given by this formula. This formula is the one which is called chain rule. Okay. Again, I am sure you have seen this formula earlier and used it also. I shall just discuss the main idea in proving this, okay, without going into too many details of this. Okay. How how does one go about proving this? Okay. What is done here is as follows. Okay, see, uh, f is differentiable at x. Okay, let us again recall the definition. What we had done is that we had defined this function. Phi, phi t which was defined as f t minus f x divided by t minus x. Okay. This was defined for t not equal to x. Okay. So, <coughs> what we can say is that uh, Okay, what we know if f is differentiable at x, this phi t has a limit okay, as t goes to x, as t goes to x, and that limit is nothing but f prime x. Okay. That limit is nothing but f prime x. Okay. So, which is same as saying that if I if I look at the function now uh, phi t minus f prime x, okay. If I look at the function phi t minus f prime x, suppose I call that function something, okay. Suppose I call that function, let us say u of t. Okay. Okay. Then u of t. Is it clear that u of t tends to zero as t tends to x? Okay. Saying that phi t tends, to, if if f is differentiable at x, what we should have, what we should have is that this function u of t should go to go to uh, go to zero as t tends to x. Now, what I can do, what I will now do is that I shall use this whole idea as follows. Okay. I will say that uh, f t minus f x is the thing but phi t into t minus x right? and phi t is the thing but f prime x plus u t. Right? So, I can say that f sorry f t minus f x this is same as I will say f prime x plus u t into t minus x. Okay. f prime x plus u t into t minus x and what is the okay, all that I have done is that just I have written this whole thing right? and with the property that u t tends to 0 as t tends to x. Okay. okay. Now, whatever I have done for uh, f, whatever I have done for f, okay, I can do the same thing for g. Okay. Only only difference is now g is not differentiable at x, but it is differentiable at f x. Okay. Suppose I call that point f x as y. Okay. 
then it is same as in a G is differentiable at y okay. and just to avoid confusion instead of using the variable t I shall use some other letter okay. let us say s. Okay. So, what I can say is that uh, is just as f t minus f x let me call say g s minus g y. g s minus g y okay. then g x minus g y since g is differentiable at y if g is differentiable at y okay, let, let, let me write this y is equal to f x okay. we are assuming that g is differentiable at y okay. then we can write g x minus g y similarly as this will be g prime y plus some function of s which goes to 0 as s goes to y. Okay, which goes to 0 as s just as here we had taken ut there will be some function some other function similarly suppose I call that function v of small v of s okay, v of s into instead of t minus x this will be s minus y okay. instead of t minus s it will be s minus y where what, what we know is that where v s tends to 0 adds s tends to y okay all right now we just use these facts okay in simplify in simplify and getting this okay i shall just uh, give one more step and maybe remaining part of the proof you can complete okay now we want to show that h is differentiable so we should sh look at the corresponding fraction of uh, uh, about h okay that is what we should look at is uh, h t minus h x divided by t minus x okay that is what we shall see okay. that, is, that is what we should look at okay. right that is our aim is to show that h t minus h x divided by t minus x this has a limit as t tends to x okay all right this div dividing by t minus x I will do little later okay. okay. Now h t minus h x by by that this is same as g of f t minus g of f x right okay. Let us just use this notation okay what is the one notation one notation is y is equal to f x and let us say s is equal to f t okay. then this is nothing but g s minus g y okay this is nothing but g s minus g y okay and use this g s minus g y is g prime y plus v s into s minus y okay that is this is nothing but g prime y plus v s into s minus y okay where what is the property of this v s v s goes to 0 as s goes to y okay and y means f x okay okay all right okay okay now let us write let us unpack this s minus y s is uh, f t and y is f x okay right so now i will change this to is it clear that i will rewrite this okay so this is i will write this as s is f t and y is f x okay. Now use this first thing that is f t minus f x is equal to f prime x plus u t into t minus x okay. So this is same as so okay, this will remain as it is this is g prime y for this y I will write back again f x okay g prime y g that is g prime at f x plus v s into this f t minus f x is f prime x plus u t into t minus x okay. okay and now I think we have all the all the required things for the proof. So, so consider t is not equal to x then we can divide by t minus x okay so, so let us say that t not equal to x 
then divide by dt minus x. So what we'll get is ht minus hx divided by t minus x. that will be same as this uh, g prime of at f x plus v s into f prime at x plus u t. Okay. And to show that h is differentiable at x means that we should show that limit of this left hand side exists as t goes to x. Okay. As t goes to x, what happens? Look at the right hand side. As t goes to x, u t tends to zero. Okay. As t goes to x, u t tends to zero. So this limit of this becomes just f prime at x. What about this bracket? This is independent of t. Okay, g prime f x is a constant. Okay. What about v s? <coughs> now here we have to use the fact that when a function is differentiable, it's also continuous so g is differentiable means g is g is also continuous so essentially we want to set vs goes to zero as s goes to that is ft goes to fx that is the fact that we have to use okay ft goes to s goes to s goes to y which is same as that ft goes to fx which means f is continuous but that is true because f is differentiable at x okay so that is why vs goes to zero okay as as s goes to y okay or s goes to y means s goes to fx okay so this tends to g prime of fx into f prime at x okay so we so we have proved that h is differentiable and its limit is nothing but g prime of fx into f prime of x okay let us now just see a couple of examples of using these theorems that is both the earlier theorem about the sums products etc and this chain rule okay. mm -hmm. let me just take this example first okay fx is equal to okay something that we have seen earlier x sin 1 by x uh, for x not equal to 0 and equal to let us say 0 for x equal to 0 Okay. Now, if uh, x is not equal to zero, there is no problem. Okay, that is, it is x is a this this function is differentiable everywhere. If at all there is any problem, it occurs because of this function, sin one by x. Okay, but again, if you use the chain rule, we let us assume that sin is differentiable everywhere and its derivative is cos of whatever is inside okay so so the the problem is about this function 1 by x okay then function 1 by x okay the one is differentiable everywhere that's a constant function so you take 1 by x so that will be differentiable at those points wherever x is not zero okay right so this product is differentiable every uh, at all x not equal to zero the only points that needs to be checked is what happens at x equal to 0 okay all right so at x equal to 0 again you think of this ft minus fx divided by t minus x okay so that is okay now we are looking at the derivative at 0 so let us look at ft minus f0 as divided by t minus 0 okay so that is the thing but uh, t sin 1 by t minus f0 is 0 divided by t okay and that is the thing but sin 1 by t okay and the question is whether the limit of this sin 1 by t exists as t goes to 0 okay and we already seen that this limit does not exist okay we already seen that this limit does not exist okay and 
So, so what is the conclusion that f is not differentiable at 0, okay. what is the conclusion f is not differentiable at 0. Remember that we have already shown that f is continuous everywhere, okay. f is continuous everywhere okay. and so we have got one more example of a function which is continuous but not differentiable. Okay. This function is continuous at 0 but it is not differentiable at 0. Okay. Now let me consider a small modification of that. Okay. So now I think of f x is instead of x sin 1 by x, suppose I consider x square sin 1 by x for x not equal to 0 okay. and say the same, this here it is set 0 for x equal to 0. Okay. Again you will see that for x not equal to 0 there is no problem. Okay. Okay. If it's because if x is not equal to 0, you have product of the two functions and this is again a composite function. So, it is uh, it is differentiable and we can find a value derivative if we want by using product rule and the chain rule. Okay. Okay. Uh, if necessary, we shall do it later. Okay. So, the real point is to, cons to be considered is what happens at x equal to 0. Okay. Right. Let us say again we do the same thing. So, suppose we take this f t minus f 0 divided by t minus 0 okay. then this will be t square sin 1 by t minus 0 divided by t minus 0 okay. t minus 0. So, what is that? So, this is t sin 1 by t okay t sin 1 by t and we have already seen that the limit of this as t goes to 0 exists okay and that limit is the thing but that limit is the thing but 0 so so this tends to 0 as t tends to 0 okay which means this function is differentiable okay this function is differentiable at x equal to 0 okay and its value is value of the limit is 0 okay okay so so the conclusion is so conclusion is f is differentiable at x equal to 0 and what about the value and f prime 0 is 0 right f prime 0 is 0 okay. okay. So, as far as x not equal to 0 is concerned we already know that f is differentiable okay. So, we can say that f is differentiable for all x in r okay f is f is differentiable on r okay again this is something let me explain i have not mentioned it earlier if is if f is differentiable at all points in some interval just as if f is continuous at all points in interval we say that f is continuous on ab similarly if if it is differentiable at all points on some interval we say that it is differentiable on that interval okay on that interval or on that set in this case that set turns out to be r okay so f is differentiable everywhere on r okay okay let us say suppose i now i want to ask a question is this f prime a continuous at 0 okay is f prime continuous at 0 okay if that is to be answered what we will have to do we will have to find what is uh, we know that f prime at 0 is 0 so we will have to look uh, calculate f prime x for x not equal to 0 also and take the limit of that as x goes to 0 that can be done right. Let us say 
let us let us do this okay what is for x dot equal to 0 what is f prime we will have to calculate this f prime by using two theorems proved earlier namely the product rule and the chain rule okay we can do it quickly so what is f prime x so let us it will be uh, 2x into sin 1 by x right that is derivative of this into this okay multiplied by plus x square into derivative of this first first it is cos 1 by x and then multiplied by minus 1 by x square okay. okay. So, this becomes uh, okay this will remain as it is. So, 2 x sin 1 by x and minus cos 1 by x right okay. Now, if we want to know that whether f prime is continuous at x equal to 0 we will have to take the limit of this as x goes to 0 okay. Limit of this as x goes to 0 and show that that limit is same as 0 okay. Now, what is the answer here? does the limit of this exist as x goes to 0 again as far as this first term is concerned there is no problem x sin 1 by x limit of that exists as is but what about the second term cos 1 by x the limit does not exist the limit does not exist. So, this function is differentiable everywhere but it is not continuous at x equal to 0 that is f prime is not continuous at x equal to 0 right is it clear. And what is the type of discontinuity? It is what we call discontinuity of the second type because the limit does not neither left hand limit nor the right hand limit will exist okay. So, this is the discontinuity of the second type okay fine <coughs> okay we will stop with this for today. We shall continue with the, uh, with the discussion about this different types of discontinuity etcetera in the, in the next class.